what problem are you finding that Eclipse J is, is, is solving? And am I pronouncing that right? You're pronouncing it absolutely correct. And Eclipse J is a developer workspace server and a cloud IDE. And the problem that it solves is to allow anyone anywhere the opportunity to contribute to a software project without having to install software first. And you very much characterized the problem accurately earlier, which is if you want to be a developer on any project, you need to have a whole series of utilities configured and ready to go. There is your production runtime from that project. You're going to need a debugger. You're probably going to need some sort of IntelliSense from a language server that provides things like code complete and syntax highlighting. You need an editor. Right, uh, you're going to need to be able to, ability to compile the code, which is going to require a specialized dev runtime. You might need SSH access, FTP, whatever those utilities are, and you have to set these things up. And that process is manual, it's error prone, um, and it's very challenging. And a developer workspace server encapsulates all of that into a single workspace. And with Che, when you create a workspace, we include the runtime for your project, all of its utilities uh, that are installed with uh, Docker, um, the debugger, the IntelliSense, and, and run it off into the cloud or on a server that you host yourself. And then give users access to it either through a browser IDE that is served up from within your workspace or from IntelliJ or Eclipse or one of those awful IDEs that you refuse to use, including in, uh, Emacs, um, huh. by, by SSHing directly back into the workspace that is set up. Emacs forever, control K is my favorite key combination. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you probably uh, you probably still have in muscle memory the stuttering for control K to keep deleting consecutive lines, right? Oh yeah, I mean, it's just like it, it, my middle finger is just sitting there kind of um, like a bunny rabbit. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it was so. It, it, it's such a really. Now we're getting it off on this week in editors. No, uh, so so let me let me characterize it again, just just to make sure that we're all on on the same page here. So, as a real life example, uh, one of my clients, uh, Insight Cruises, I develop uh, code for them that lives in the cloud, runs on FreeBSD systems. Uh, now to be migrating over to some Linux systems uh, on AWS, but for a while it's been uh, FreeBSD systems. Well, okay, so I've got Perl installed there, I've got Apache installed there, and I, I, I have a you know a number of other tools around that to, to be able to do, to produce these uh, these web pages and and uh, record the clients uh, you know signing up for cruises things like that. But when we develop, we're developing on localhost um, as we call it, which is uh, now I'm running on OS 10, yep. so I have I'm using Mac ports. To install roughly the same Perl uh, 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 modules, I have a different Apache and different configuration files required, and so I have this constant shifting back and forth as I take the code, and I hope it's going to work exactly the same way in the cloud. So, th would you say that's a typical setup problem for people? And so, how is Che precisely solving this? It's a it's a it's a very typical problem. Uh, it's commonplace, and this problem materializes at any time you want to take a production system and then create a development environment locally. It happens when you want to move from maybe your work computer to your home computer, and you want to pick up the work that you left off. And it also happens among teams where you have a team leader uh, who is trying to delegate work to different individuals um, that need to have identical systems. Or even in the open source arena, if you're trying to build, if you have an open source project and you're trying to build your contributor base, you need to make it simple for those contributors to get a development environment set up. And so uh, the, the approach that we took to solve this is to say, let's redefine the workspace. Historically, if you get a desktop IDE on localhost, the workspace is contained to the files of your project, the code, and then the linkages of that code to your local host system. And we said that that abstraction is the wrong one. The workspace in our world needs to not only include the code, but all of its dependencies. So that when you come into Che and say, give me a workspace, that workspace goes through an activation process so that when it is up and running and we verify that it's running, the code is there, all of its dependencies to compile it and debug it are there, 
and it has a runtime so that it's running in it. And that that is, um, and then there's also a browser IDE that is inside of it and hosted from within the workspace. So the workspace activation process verifies all those dependencies, whatever they may be, installs them if necessary, configures them if appropriate, hosts the web IDE, and then just gives back to the user, hey, here's a URL, click on it and you can get to town. Or if you want to, you can upload an SSH key and then connect your desktop IDE and go.